So, respected chairpersons, senior doctors, and my dear colleagues, at the outset, my sincere thanks to Dr. Manojji and Banshi, the entire Diabetes India, for giving this wonderful opportunity. So, after, after rapid fire talk from Ajay sir, it's very difficult for a speaker like me to speak. Anyway, I'll try to do some justice. So, my topic is influenza vaccines. Two Indians really need it. So, over the next 15 to 20 minutes, I'll just focus upon the, my thoughts on the influenza vaccines. So, let us go back in the history. What was the history which says about the pandemic, about the influenza, how it has been things. This picture depicts how the pandemic has affected across the globe. So, this is about the history. So, influenza, which has been often misunderstood and underestimated. So, it's a, just, it's not a bad cold. So, it has certain differences among the common flu and the common cold. To highlight what exactly the influenza flu. So, it has high rate of fever for more than prominent headache and other things, the symptoms which you all know. So, just to have the prominent features of things. So, it has two aspects of influenza. One is the seasonal epidemic influenza, which is mostly of viral and highly contagious. And I am not going to detail about the aspect of things. So, again, one is the pandemic influenza. So, what are the complications of influenza? So, mainly the pulmonary complications. Just focus upon, so it causes exaggeration of the asthma, primary influenza viral pneumonia, the secondary bacterial pneumonia, and also other chronic comorbid conditions has been worsened. So, with this other non-pulmonary complications, the cardiac, myositis, gullion barry syndrome, transverse myelitis, toxic syndrome, and other things. So, with this background of the influenza, who are all at risk for getting this influenza? So, if you have a chronic respiratory disease, a cardiac risk factor, or a neurodevelopmental disorders, metabolic problem like diabetes, hematological disorders, and immunocompromised person. So, these are the high risk factors who are more prone for getting influenza. So, this once again depicts the various population where you can find the higher risk for influenza. Children less than 5 years, especially less than 2 years, adults greater than 65 years, chronic disorders, neurological disorders, and immunocompromise, the most important aspect is pregnancy. So, Influenza infection is often just a beginning for the individuals in chronic diseases as diabetes. So, it just starts when it goes to the complications and hospitalization and finally the morbidity rate is very high in case of immunocompromised and chronic metabolic disease. So, this is about the history, prevalence and other things. So, this is the virus, the influenza virus. What exactly it causes? What is the exact pathogenesis it causes? So, I am not going to detail about the things. It just, it triggers a local inflammatory re reaction in the upper respiratory tract and finally ending a systemic body reactions. So, this is the disease profile, how it goes on from the day of onset and finally ending with the thing. So, what is the other aspect of pandemic influenza? So, it's an exceptional thing which has been rapid worldwide and we all know how it has been over the past period of years. So, this is the thing. So, a few words about the influence of virus. So, it has been first isolated in 1933 and there have been three different types, type A, type B and type C and only type A and B cause a significant illness and epidemics. And the type A, it mutates easily. So, a little bit about the antigenic drift. So, the minor variations in the heme aglutinin or the new aminase reaction, they affects the influenza type A and type B viruses. So, and this is caused by the mutations which occur in the viral RNA and it occurs each and every year with a subtype. So, and the resulting modified virus that being the causative factor for the annual epidemic which occurs each and every year. So, emergence of a novel virus which affects only type A and caused by mild genetic influences 
the human population has little or no immune protection against this novel virus. So, what is the Indian scenario? We just focus upon the thing across the year, across the parts of entire India, we have been suffered by this seasonal and pandemic influence. So, what is the surveillance information? WHO clearly says there has been two peaks in India across the other all the states of India. So, in 2015, the H1N1, we know about how much impact it had on India. Nearly 2,000 lives has been thing and nearly 33,000 people were affected across India. So, this was the statistics in 2015. And this was the various prevalence across the states in India. And this was the incidence of deaths which occurred in 2015. So, this was once again the hospitalization rate during pregnancy due to this pandemic. So, higher admission rates were among the pregnant women during the influenza season and pregnant women especially with the comorbid conditions were three times more increased and likely to be hospitalized than without any comorbid conditions. So, the effect of influenza in pregnancy on the fetus. So, the babies born to the mothers hospitalized during pregnancy were likely to be born small for gestational age and they had increased perinatal mortality and finally, they were preterm and the admission for H NICU was higher in this case. So, the Indian scenario, that was the US data and even in India, they had a higher maternal mortality and the fetal mortality was also higher. So, what are the management, especially during pregnancy in case of influenza? We have the antiviral drugs, which is recommended and safe for both the things, supportive treatment and other things. But whether it is safe during pregnancy, the chemo prophylaxis and other things has to be addressed. So, with this background of influenza, so how to prevent this fire? So, the prevention strategies, what we are going to do? Only way is influenza vaccine. So, what about the vaccines? So, the influenza vaccine, which was first available in 1940s, the whole prion vaccines. But in day-to-day -day thing, there had been two types of vaccines. One is the trivalent. The other one is two formulations which is being done every year. The other one is vaccine which has been co-formulated. So, this trivalent which has two substrains, one is a main type A and the other one is type B. So, the last one is cell cultured based vaccines. So, first a few words about the old virus vaccines. What are the characteristics? So, the surface antigens, internal antigens, lipopolysaccharides which binds the things. And this has a very good implications. The good immunogenicity and the reactogenicity is very high in respect to whole virus vaccines. So, what about the fit virus? So, the thing is, main thing is, it's free of reactogenic lipids which surround this thing. So, the vaccine implications in respect to this thing is also good. Immunogenicity is good and the tolerance is good in respect to this split virus vaccine. So, what are the seasonal influenza vaccine? So, this is a recommendation how much dosage has to be given and how much amount has to be given in respect to the age groups and things. So, how this influenza vaccines are made? So, the three different types of influenza vaccine which has been approved by the US FDA. The one is egg-based flu vaccine, the most common method. The second is still blazed flu vaccine and third is recombinant flu vaccine. So, what are the benefits? We need some data to the things. So, when you give in respect to the pregnant women, there has been proven possible cross protection against the related strains and also to the fetus, transplanted placental transfer of antibodies to the fetus, providing some protection, decreased lab confirmed influenza in my so, this flu vaccine is recommended as a single dose after 26 weeks of pregnancy may be administered in epidemics and they confers protection to the newborn who are not to be vaccinated 
till first six months of life. So what about the postnatal period? For all non-immunized mothers, immunization against the following is recommended by the FOXI. Tetanus, Influenza, Rubella, Hepatitis B, Varicella and HP. So even the WHO, they say healthcare workers, children, the elderly and the people with high risk conditions has to be vaccinated with influence. So these are the various feasibility, the disease severity, the vaccine effectiveness, and what are the benefits in respect to the World Health Organization. So even the Association of Physicians of India, they say people in the second and third trimester has to be vaccinated and vaccination before the season becomes critical. Routine influenza vaccine is recommended for all women. So this is about the American College of Obstetrician Gynecologist. So they say pregnant women and young children are at increased risk of serious complications and adverse neonatal outcomes as force for the influenza vaccine to be given to all pregnant women and it's found to be safe and effective in pregnancy. So what about the overall effectiveness? So they have a 70 to 90 percent efficacy, 60 percent in the elderly age group and in also 68 percent reduction in the hospitality when you have a vaccination and they have been beneficial to the society the vaccination reduces the risk of transmitting the virus and also the risk of complications is being reduced in respect to the influenza virus so this vaccine is well tolerated discomfort and redness are very short-lived and repeated vaccinations every year they do not cause any intolerance so this is the effects sorry efficacy data so we live in an era of some type of data so this is about the data so they have across more than 40 to 60 percent safer when you have this influenza vaccine so this vaccine has been updated annually to better match the circulating viruses and they reduce the risk of flu illness by 40 to 60 percent and always some protection is better than no protection at all. So having a vaccine for each and everyone is the best choice. So with this, what, how do you administer this influenza vaccine? So this has to be taken in this thing, inspect for the extranation particular, administer the vaccine intramuscularly and the preferred site is into the little thyroid muscle. And for the infants and younger children, the anterolateral aspect of mid thigh, which is known to each and everyone. So this is the dosage, once again the repeated things and this adverse reactions which is common in all type of any vaccinations. So this is the vaccination time when it has to be given across all states in the state of various states in India. So April to May in some places and mostly September to October in the Tamil Nadu and Jammu and Kashmir. So India, the National Influenza Vaccination, they have said the first full week in December has to be given the entire vaccines across all states. So finally, I'll just end saying that let them help all the people to fight against the flu so that they can do what all they want to do. And it's the National Influenza which can be prevented at a greater stage and the complications can be done. So thank you all for your patient here.